Hey everybody, this is Doing Lines. This is the podcast where comedians and folks bet on all of the sports and not sports of sports. I'm your host, Kyle Ayers, joined as always by my co-host, Austin Huff. Am I the and folks in that uh, description of the podcast? Uh, no, I, I would say uh, only specifically Kyle Brandt. <laughs> okay. I would okay. say there's comedians and then people who hate podcasts. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, how funny was that? Um, literally Maybe a week the after we get. I've ever heard. Literally like a week after we get Kyle Brandt on mm-hmm. the podcast, uh, he mm-hmm. gives a rant on Good Morning Football where yeah. he's like done with podcasts. He's not doing yeah. any podcasts. Now, I have a couple of theories about this. Okay. Either one, he was after being on our podcast, he got an influx of of inquiries from many people all over the globe being like I call oh, that the he'll optimistic do that. outlook. Yeah, 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 like that, that is very optimistic for sure. Uh if, if people are like if, oh, if he'll do that no name podcast, he'll surely do my no name podcast. And then right. uh my other theory is the fact that um he did not um the uh, uh I'm I'm blanking on my on my theories here now. Uh the <laughs> my other theory is that he was just giving a take just to give a take. Obviously, yeah. when you have a three-hour morning show, you've got to you've got to fill time, and so he was just doing it. Um, another take is that our podcast was so good, he knows no other podcast will ever top that. Right. And, and then maybe, my fourth, my, no, no, my no, fourth that, theory there, there is can't that be a fourth that, one. <laughs> no, there's a fourth theory. It's just that <laughs> that we were so bad that he's like, I'm yeah. never doing a podcast. That's what happens again. when I I have the lighting of my childhood bedroom for a Zoom. That's what I had back then. So maybe that's why he doesn't want to do it ever again. He's like, this guy's uh, got weird possible. lighting. He's got a weird fake Chiefs Super Bowl ring he bought off Timu. Um, yeah. Or or Alibaba or something like that. I don't remember where I got it, but it is uh, very fake. But I actually got it. I did a, a, a sports podcast last night, and they I brought it up. They're like, it's funny how Kyle Brandt did your podcast and then talked about how he hates podcasts. I'm like, this. <laughs> do you ever think about yeah. anything else related to me you want to talk he, about? <laughs> he he did retweet our video about it, uh, which makes yeah. me think it. Uh, I'm erring it was... towards your first theory that was he got an influx of yeah. asks after people saw two clowns on Zoom talking to him. Right, right. Because we are like the bottom of the barrel when it comes to uh podcasts i mean we honestly our bets don't even make sense they're no. they're just made up by us not even the actual like sports it doesn't books. make sense just to bet for fun your brain gets smart but these bets are dumb damn what a callback right there folks mm-hmm. uh go back and listen to the episode with god brand if you haven't done so if you already. want that joke to be almost okay go back and listen to a very dated <laughs> podcast if not you might as well be walking on the sun honestly uh hey now I uh <laughs> last week we had Megan Gailey on and and she was wonderful Colts fan a unfortunate series of events for Anthony Richardson um getting that concussion but uh let, I'm going to go over the re- once again if if this is your first time listening to this ever Basically, yeah. Austin and I come up with some fake bets about real things that could kind of be real bets. Think about, like, uh, I, I like to consider us the thinking man's what color is the Gatorade going to be. That, I think, is a beautiful way to describe yeah. this podcast. You know how everyone that's loves the that elevator bet? pitch. Yeah. Everyone always loves that bet at the Super Bowl. Well, what mm-hmm. if that bet happened all the time and you didn't <laughs> love it? <laughs> yeah, and sometimes was, like, personal about, like, our right. everyday lives. I remember last right. year we did a bet uh, with the Sklar brothers. The It was which is more like touchdowns scored by the bears or poopy diapers that I have to change on a Sunday. Oh, we've done plenty about like the amount of uh, group chats I will get about (laughs) Pittsburgh playing bad or something like in a, a, in a fantasy chat. Uh, So, you know, we got some fake prop bets and, and uh, like uh, Jim Irsay tweets versus Anthony Richardson rushes or uh, you know, do we have like some, uh, what, what you made me do Vol or Travis Kelsey, Taylor Swift, which is growing. This relationship seems to be blossoming. Apparently, it's official. Um, yeah. Yeah. Although Jason Kelsey also said Travis would play week one. So somehow the least reliable source in the league might be the guy <laughs> who talks is, to is the guy brother. every week. Yeah, yeah. The man who does a podcast with him, the closest man with him is not. Which, speaking of the Chiefs, real quick, before we get into the bets, um, 
Kyle, you got to be feeling so good as a Chiefs fan to be catching the Bears right now when they are in a, a week where Justin Fields is trashing his uh, his coaching staff. I don't and... think I wa- the Chiefs were the Bears falling apart more away from winning the game, but it's I... certainly uh, uh, look they're catching the wild. the Chiefs are catching the Bears at the right time. I'll say that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're zero and two. Big whoop. But I like, do think with... that it, Justin Fields is right. That's the crazy part. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, like, apparently, I think I'm being coached bad. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I, dude, we also have TV. I haven't <laughs> – yeah, right, right. <laughs> I haven't looked this up, um, but I did get a text of a buddy of mine who is a diehard Bears fan. And um, I, I've done no research on this on my own, so I could just be spouting off just fake facts right now. But apparently the Bears offices and their defensive coordinator's home was raided – by the FBI because their defensive coordinator and the defensive coordinator missed last week because oh. he was quote unquote sick. But huh. um, apparently were they looking he's into for some Hunter, seriously... Hunter Bairdin's laptop? Hunter Bairdin. Yeah. That's their defensive coordinator. Did I not tell you that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hunter gatherer Bairdin. <laughs> that would be, that'd be a great name. I would vote yeah. for a bear. Please. Uh, gatherer if he ever ran is for my president. father. I, well, I I don't know what's wrong with the Bears. I thought they would at least be okay, and they are dumpster fire. I don't think anyone really knows. Well, everyone in Chicago is like, yeah, well, this is the Bears. This is what we've come to know. Uh, but right. for me, an outsider living here, I'm like, I they should be better than this. But the and optimism I think Bears fans I think they will had, be better. Bears fans in August thought this. Well, the Chiefs will trade us Chris Jones, and then we'll win the division. That's what was in their brain in August. Right. And, yeah, uh, Jonathan Taylor as well. They're going to yeah, load up at running yeah. back. Yeah. All, I, I do love a team that's just good players away from being better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's all of us, isn't it? Except well, for you. Uh, Except for you and the Chiefs. It, it is literally all of us. Where it's like, if we we are just get this no guy. players away from being the same somehow. Yeah. We're, we, uh, we, th- you, we took the low-powered players from the Giants offense and are the same team. <laughs> yeah, you you got Kadarius Tony, who has been awful, putrid this season, and somehow the Chiefs are still like, had, yeah, we have five catches. He had an okay second game. They, he did what he they wanted him to do, um, which was uh, nothing between him and Jawan Taylor. They were just like, if you guys could just not be what announcers talk about. I feel like Kadarius Tony has created more memes. Uh, for the Chiefs than touchdowns. Oh, I mean, his, like, laser... Uh, yeah, yeah. But if you have the greatest punt return in Super Bowl history, you get a little bit of leeway buffer on both sides <laughs> for a little while. A while. Uh, anyways, so we got some fake bets. We have Sarah Tiana on today, who is just absolutely hilarious. Yes. Um, I will update everyone on the score. Last week, no one did good. We tallied up. Everyone spent $1,000. Yeah. Austin, uh, you lost $1,000. Uh, I yeah, lost. I, I was I, I was kind of bringing up everything I could, it, other than the scores for this yeah. last week. And, this uh, last week was a was a nightmare. The yeah. lock got all of us. It did. Megan Megan is now she lost eight hundred and fifty dollars, which won her the week. Honestly, um, with that negative eight hundred and fifty dollars, she's like Scrooge McDuck jumping into an empty pool. She won by so much. <laughs> And uh, so Megan is now in second place out of two. And between you and I, Austin, I for our, our leaderboard, I have negative 1,500 and you have negative 1,600. So it's still close. Cool. It's anybody's cool. game to hey, – it's, it's like we're throwing a flaming Jumanji board back and forth from each other. Don't let me get hot, dude. Do not let me get hot. <laughs> uh, but don't I will say Austin this, Megan. Cook. Yeah, Megan – in more ways than one. Megan's negative uh, 850 – that lands her in second place. It so. really does. Um, which also, I think Megan said she's never going to do a podcast again. <laughs> Why does, I think my the way I'm holding the microphone, Zoom thinks I'm giving a thumbs up. <laughs> and I know it that's won't really stop cool. Doing thumb I, ups. Mine, mine will not do that. Uh, this, which just is great podcasting. But if you're watching on YouTube, which you can watch the podcast on YouTube now, um, mm-hmm. mine doesn't give the thumbs up. Yeah, check us out uh, at Cork Bats or wherever you find stuff. Corked with a K. Yeah. I'm Kyle. I'm Austin. Let's get into the episode. Uh, this is Let's week three it. in the NFL with Sarah Tiana. Our next guest here for week three of the NFL season has a stand-up comedy special called 44 on YouTube that you can check out. She'll be at the La Jolla Comedy Store all weekend this weekend. Uh, please, thank you so much for being here. Sarah Tiana, thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, also, 
a, a Georgia native. We'll get in the sports mm-hmm. fandom, a Georgia Bulldog fan, an Atlanta f- Falcons fan. I know you're yeah. a Braves fan, so I'm assuming yeah. Falcons. Although, Falcons, uh, Hawks, but an LA Kings fan because we don't have any hockey anymore. <laughs> no, no you're, more you're not still a, you're not still holding to the Thrashers. No. I let them go to Winnipeg and like I let Winnipeg have them. Oh, I would love holding a grudge against Canada for getting hockey. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, <laughs> who hates Winnipeg? I just hate those Canadians for wanting then you look at your paper, hockey. Mm. Um and taking it. It is yeah. always wild to me when all of the Florida teams are knocking all of the Canadian teams out of the NHL playoffs. It feels almost like mean. Right. Yeah, because last year wasn't it like Carolina and Florida? It was like what Just, expansions? Yeah, it's been a lot of warm weather victories. I don't follow NHL super closely, but but once the Stanley Cup starts and it's like still ninety in both of the places yeah. where it's mm-hmm. happening. Although I guess it's the summer at that point. It just feels well, a little I re- unfair. I remember when they were doing the um, you know how they always do the uh, outdoor hockey game and they were doing one at Dodger Stadium and everyone was freaking out because it was one of those weekends in January where it just happens to be 80, <laughs> yeah, like right, 78 right. degrees or 80. But they said it's actually easier to maintain the ice in warm weather than it is in cold weather because when it's cold, they can't they can't warm it up, but they can oh. always make it colder, the, the ice, the water colder. But But like the outside it, air, like over freezing the ice was harder. It feels like science, sense. science. This is why I failed science growing up. This is exactly well, I don't why. understand it. I just know that like my hockey player friends always yeah. said it was easier. When I it love was the, warmer out. like the idea of just the Zamboni people getting like super hyped for the LA game. They're like, don't we fuck it. We got this. We got this. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they're just explaining it. I mean, I, the Zamboni is, a, I love it. I used to play the, it was like the regular Nintendo, the NES had a hockey game and in between, they would still make you watch the Zamboni. Even though (laughs) the players don't need to rest, they're eight hits, but they were like, you have 30 seconds of watching a Zamboni go across the screen. I'm like, that, that's a job right there. There should be a Zamboni video game. Like, like it's uh, like how, uh, what the NFL came out with that head coach video game back. Yeah. I would love EA They should have a Zamboni one. Maintenance. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> where you're just like un- you're unfortunately putting the grass down at the Super Bowl and losing because uh, you have to hand a player it. a stick if he breaks it on the ice you know you're one of those guys <laughs> you get to just like apologize to Aaron Rodgers yeah. <laughs> Sarah uh, I want to know as an Atlanta sports fan um I feel like for the longest time it has been like you know oh what was us like it's been tough Mm -hmm. like obviously like the Braves have have given success like within the division and up until late at now like the Braves kind of like I feel like broke the um, broke the glass and now Georgia is just producing every championship known to man now like the Bulldogs (laughs) are winning every college football title Uh, the Braves are won a world series two years ago. They're probably going to win this year. Let's be honest. Uh, wh- like, wh- wh- is that weird for you? And that's going co- from like, this, and that, like that's coming from being- Austin. Who's a Dodgers fan of all people. <laughs> I look, it's tough. It's tough. Uh, it's tough being a Dodgers fan and being so miserable all the time. I uh, just, so well, like, we haven't it's, had it's the like, best it's play- like- pitcher of a generation almost all year. <laughs> It's like you it's like, yeah, the Dodgers are so rich, but then come tax season every year is like when it really bites you in the ass. And October wow. is the Dodgers tax season. Well, but I think that this you know, like this year you guys cut way back to get under the luxury tax, probably to make room for Shohei. You know, yes. I think yeah, he, right. I think it's I think he's it's the obvious choice. The Dodgers to me are the obvious choice for him. He doesn't have to uproot very far. He doesn't have to move far. The stadium's the biggest. You know, uh, it's still the West Coast, so it's closer to Japan. So, like, the the layover time is not yet another three hours. You know what I mean? And and uh, so I, I think it's it's inevitable to me that that's where he's going. But I think um, you guys have done a lot this year under the cap. You know, like, usually you guys go over and it's like, well, of course, they paid the most. Yeah. They should be here. You, you, pay, you spend that money, you should be here. This right. year, guys, are doing great without it. Yeah, it's almost been a curse to spend money in baseball lately with the Padres and the Mets. Just yeah, let me go yeah. put my Royals hat on. <laughs> we paid a guy last year. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, it's hard. You know, it's hard. And like, you, you know, you just end up like you spend years rebuilding and, and just trying to get that farm system up and going and, you know, but the Braves pay for depth. That's what they pay. They just pay yeah. for depth. They don't really pay the, Bra- one the Braves are good. The Bulldogs are good. The Falcons, I feel like, are, I mean, they're. Georgia football is so good that the of- Eagles are good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's so true, yeah. I mean, the Falcons are, are I think, we are, we're, we look better every game. And this year, it's like Desmond Ritter hasn't wowed me. I think we should trade Kyle Pitts. I don't think he cares. And I think they're just using him as a decoy. I don't even really think he has the potential to catch anything. Anyway, I don't know how good he is at running routes. I don't know if he's just never open, or if he's double covered, or if he just is not good at running routes. You know, like <laughs> Antonio Brown is always good at running routes because Antonio Brown is so crazy. He doesn't even know where he's going. So yeah. how can you track him? Right? Never let him know his own next move. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, I, I do think we looked better in the second half of this last weekend. The Falcons did. So I think Ritter, you know, it takes time to get up to speed. Like, look how much better Mac Jones looks this year than yeah. he did last year. Like, he looks so much better this year. And I would argue that Zach Wilson looks way better this year. I know he's not getting any love. Like, how are you supposed to – how does anybody look good against the Dallas defense? I am. I will firmly – I keep – I am very much in the camp of everyone is too impatient with – I think everyone – sitting a quarterback <laughs> is so smart. Look at Jordan Love. I feel like if you yeah. sit your quarterback behind a good guy for two years, you'll have the 10th yeah. best quarterback in the league. That's yeah. all it takes is not giving up on a guy, sitting on him, not bouncing him er, around, yeah. letting him learn how the – these guys haven't gone to class before, and now you're asking him to go to meetings on top of everything. The speed of the NFL is insane. The speed of the NFL. And that's what yeah. every guy says who comes from college to the NFL. They go, the, the speed is – it's just so much faster. And so right. you, you're not even conditioned on the speed. You're not conditioned on the pocket collapsing. So it takes a while to get up to speed, to learn how to feel the rush as a opposed to watching those guys come at you to yeah. a blitz, you have to feel the blitz so that every you're looking guy at your receivers. On every team is faster than almost anyone you played against. Uh, like yeah. Aaron Donald yeah. is faster than any of the receivers you probably threw to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Well that's why there's that's why there's so much like growth from your rookie season to your sophomore season. Yeah. Like that's why they say like guys always have like make that jump, that sophomore jump, because they're more acclimated to the speed and they're more more accustomed to right, like, like what it Fields. is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But what they don't tell you is then in your junior years when you start to regress. Like in Justin your junior Fields. year, you get real junior yeah. eyes. Oh my god. Well we want I- uh, yeah, we want know. to get into our bets here for the week. Uh, okay. As Austin always puts it, since we are all people of means here, we mm-hmm. have plenty of money to throw around. This thousand dollars so means rich. nothing to any of us. It's almost fake, you would say. Yeah. Right. Uh, we we like to play for charity here. Is is there a charity that you would like to play and bet your thousand dollars for, Sarah? Yeah, I'm going to be playing for the WHO, the World Heath Organization, <laughs> uh, and that is an organization that gives Heath bars to people that have never had a Heath bar <laughs> and claim that Butterfinger is better. Oh, and so it oh. is a way of taking people out of the Butterfinger game and into the Heath bar game. Wow. Oh my gosh, Sarah, you yeah. might be, you might be speaking to someone who could benefit from your charity because I am team Butterfinger all the way and I'm, I'm anti Heath bar. No, I was just saying the name of the charity. How no. can you be anti? Okay. Well, I, I just don't know. Cause it's candy bar. I know, I know, I know, guys. Look, and I don't mean to wage war here on the podcast, but it is I, I I feel like it tastes like it I'm not a toffee guy. And I and that is and he and Heath Bar is all toffee. All right, but Butterfinger is just like flaky toffee. <laughs> it is. And I look, I prefer my toffee like I like my women, just very flaky. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I uh, prefer well, it like I like my women hard and uh, not available for, for and at the bottom of my Dairy Queen menu. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I I like Heath Bar. I can get. I love them in a Blizzard. I remember that's the first time I ever got one because I didn't know what it was, and I got it in a Blizzard. Always in a Blizzard. Very good. Yeah. So we will try yeah. and get okay. some money there. Here's how we're gonna do this. Austin and I will list out all six of our bets. You have a thousand dollars to allocate across all six. You don't have to bet on all of them. Okay. At least bet on two. Um, we're trying to get rid of the bet all of your thousand on one. Okay. So at least bet on a couple and uh, make one of your bets your lock. So mm-hmm. like I told you, the lock mm-hmm. will be double winnings, but triple if it misses. 
And um, all right, so here we go. Austin, you want me to read mine out here first? Yeah, you go ahead. All right, here's my three bets. And then you can, we'll allocate your money at the very end. Uh, okay. My first bet is called the uh, All of Our Fans Are Somewhere Else bet. This is a, uh, the, the Steelers play the Raiders this weekend in Las Vegas. And the Steelers and Raiders fans are pretty much everywhere else. So <laughs> uh, I assume everyone going to this game will be driving from Los Angeles the morning of the game. And I just figured there's there's L.A. is all Raiders fans. Not all, but it's a lot. of You know what I mean? They love the Raiders. That's still. a lot. And Steelers fans are everywhere. Yeah, so Steelers uh, fans are everyone else, basically. Everyone else. <laughs> I went to the every time I go to the Chargers Chiefs game, it's 60 percent Chiefs fans, 38 percent Raiders fans and 2 percent Colin Kaepernick jerseys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah. so if you. If you went to the Titans Chargers game this past weekend, it was probably fifty percent Titans fans and then seventy percent somehow. The math doesn't even add up. Steelers fans, it's weird. It is wild. they travel so well. So in 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 honor of everyone driving from L.A. to the game, Los Angeles is two hundred sixty nine miles from Las Vegas. Will either quarterback throw for two hundred sixty nine yards? You can win uh, if they both do. You could let's say you put a hundred dollars down, you could win two hundred if they both do. Or you can lose two hundred if they both don't. Oh, I don't okay. Know so how it's, that math's so going. I'm not good at making the bets, and I'm sorry I led with the crappy one. Two sixty nine. You're saying over over under over under two sixty nine. Two sixty nine yeah. for Garoppolo or Pickett. Yeah, and you can bet on uh, zero one or both. Okay. My second one oh. is uh, wow, they're really dropping the ball this year. The bet. The Chiefs are playing <laughs> the Bears. The wide receivers for the Chiefs are dropping the ball. The Bears organization is dropping the ball. <laughs> Will there be more touchdowns from Chiefs wide receivers or the Bears team? Damn, that's good. That's a great bet. Nice game. Or the Bears. Or just the Bears. Or just the Bears. Um, <laughs> and uh, my final one is uh, uh, hot as shit. <laughs> the Chiefs played the Jaguars. It's so hot in Jacksonville. They played last week. It's so hot. Everyone saw how hot it was. Travis Kelsey looks like he got a broke up text during the game. He was so hot. Yeah. <laughs> That's from good. Taylor Swift. Yeah. This man was playing like he found out it wasn't a relationship the whole time. Mm -hmm. Like this dude looked lost. <laughs> um, and still was good. But mm -hmm. uh, uh, will there be a drive in the the Jaguars play the Texans this week? Will there be a, a a drive longer than the temperature in Jacksonville? The they're looking at eighty one to eighty four degrees on Sunday. Okay. Will there be a, a drive longer than whatever the temperature in the high temperature during the game ends up being? Okay, and you said it's projected. It's forecasted at eighty four. Eighty four is the high for the whole day. Okay. Is Jags v who? Uh, Texans. To oh. just jugger nish <laughs> so those are my three i got uh uh 269 passing yards for pickett or garoppolo um or whoever backs up garoppolo i have more <laughs> touchdowns chiefs wide receivers of the bears uh team and then i have any 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 drives honestly they don't even have to score they could go 92 yards and fumble it at the three and that sounds about like how both of those teams have been going um, yeah, and it drives longer than the temperature, high temp during the game. <laughs> That'd be funny if someone drove for over 84 yards and still came away with no points on the drive. That would be that would the be... Texans. Is, that's like literally driving in Houston. You drive and drive and drive and drive and drive and you, <laughs> you don't get, get anything nowhere. out of it. <laughs> uh, all right. My three bets of the week. I also have a Chiefs Bears bet, uh, and it is a which is more um, in honor of both Sky Moore and DJ Moore playing against each other. <laughs> Um, I, which is more points by the chiefs or yards in the bears biggest play of the game. Now I went and had, did some research for you guys to help you out week one. The longest play for the bears was 19 yards. The, uh, the chiefs right now currently are averaging, I think 18 and a half points week two bears offense kind of came alive a little bit in a way in if ish. Mm -hmm. uh, their longest play was 33 yards. So which is more the longest play? I think, honestly, the Chiefs could surpass either one of those in uh, points this week. Um, and then my second bet, Sarah, in honor of your Atlanta sports fandom, uh, I do have a Falcons bet. Um, okay. it, they are playing the Lions. 
I'm a big, big Dan Campbell fan, um, mainly just because I don't know. I just think that he's just a dude. And I, uh, I, this one dates back to his introductory press conference when he talked about how the lions are going to, uh, basically eat people's kneecaps. Very cannibalistic approach to his uh, head coaching Dan tenure. Dan cannibalistic. Dan, mm-hmm. Dan cannibalistic. Yes. The which so basically this this bet is simple between the Falcons and the Lions. Which team, in honor of biting kneecaps off, which team has more kneel downs? And that <laughs> includes halftime. That includes the second half. And now, if it there is a tiebreaker, if either team. Um, you know, if they, you know, one team has two kneel downs at the end of the half and the other team has two at the end of the game and they tie the tiebreaker is based off of what color shirt Dan Campbell wears. If he wears black for the Falcons, then the Falcons get 0.5 added to their total. This if he wears easy to remember. <laughs> if, he, <laughs> if, he, if he wears blue or any other color, gray, anything else, anything other than black then Dan Campbell and the Lions get the point five added to their kneel downs. Has he ever worn black? Uh, he's worn the black the, the, fir- the first two weeks of the season. So oh, there's a good chance he could he could wear black. And okay. the uh, but the Falcons obviously wear black. So I'm wondering if he changes it up for them. Okay. And then l- lastly, the pop mm-hmm. culture bet of the week. It is a bet we do that is um, mostly loosely tied to pop culture. And this week, I feel like the pop culture news was kind of always uh, current slow. references, current references always. for sure. Oh, just wait till today's Kyle. The uh, last week, you know, obviously we had the news of Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift rumors. So we had a lot to go off of last week. This week, I think pop culture kind of took a step back and said, you know, what, we're going to take a week off. It's we're, we're gearing up for spooky season with October. We're just going to take this week in September off. So, so the only thing I could find was I went to the box office this weekend. Movies opening this weekend. And the, the movie that caught my eye was Carlos, the Santana journey. It is a documentary. <laughs> it follows Santana's journey from 14 year old street musician to 10 time Grammy winning global sensation. This movie features unseen archival footage and tracks. Now, we love Carlos Santana, right? I feel like I'm not alone in saying that. You're like alone. worldwide. <laughs> <laughs> is this going to be like how many trans rants is he going to do at, in the movie? <laughs> Versus how this, many <laughs> Very close, very close. Uh in honor of the uh Carlos Santana <laughs> The, there's Who, a documentary about Carlos Santana coming out in movie theaters. Yeah, it's very timely. In fact, I went back and looked up his. Um, <laughs> I went back and looked up his Grammy awards. Awesome. His uh-huh. most recent, his most recent Grammy award one was in the year 2000. He didn't win <laughs> one for Smooth. That that was in 2000. That was oh. it. Yeah, wow. record of the year in 2000. Uh, he also won for Maria Maria that year too. Big year in 2000 for. Yeah, and then what happened the next year? The world went to shit. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, not never forget. I'm not him. blaming Carlos Santana for 9-11. In fact, I'm not even going <laughs> to figure out where this rant's going. It's not all his fault. It's not it's all his right. fault, but before He did that nothing song, to prevent building, it, that's for yeah. sure. Other yeah. people were involved. Yeah, it, I would love for this dumb uh, sports betting podcast or else to turn forget into a about conspiracy it. podcast. Never forget. I don't know. I'm feeling some lyrical overlap between smooth and 911 mm-hmm. poster that wow. I have behind me. That is that is All deep, right, what's man. the bet? <laughs> His guitar did nothing to stop the attacks. Uh who has more? Carlos Santana hits. You know, this is of course referring to the first baseman for the Milwaukee Brewers, Carlos Santana. Over the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, or for our love of Carlos Santana. Look, I had to I had to work hard for this one. Jordan Love touchdown passes, another Wisconsin athlete. Jordan Love touchdown passes or Carlos Santana hits over the weekend. Now, for the record, Jordan Love is averaging three touchdown passes a week for his first two weeks. Carlos mm-hmm. Santana had three hits over the weekend this past weekend. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, 
which is more. That is this week's pop culture bet of the week. Hmm. Wow. My, I mean, Hugh Grant, uh, Hugh Grant, Hugh Jackman and his wife separated. You could have done a Wolverine, Wolverine bet Wolverine, with the Michigan, Michigan players, Harbaugh's. All right, listen, guys. Over why don't you leave the pop? Why don't you leave the pop culture bets to me, okay? Unaborted right. babies that Harbaugh ends up adopting, or <laughs> yards. That's one of those classic pushes against the Wolverine. <laughs> you, you know what? I now I'm regretting. Why did I not go against the unaborted babies? <laughs> That'd get us our yeah. SEO would bump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're going to have a new uh, new core listening audience after this week with our 9-11 conspiracies. <laughs> wow. All right. Well, whew, these are lots of options to use my money for. Yeah. $1,000 of fake bets. You can distribute them however you would like, Sarah. Uh, but okay. yeah, just two or more bets. So for sure, I think... Um, yeah, the fans somewhere else bet with the uh the two hundred sixty Ra- Vegas passing Raiders. Yards. Yeah. Two sixty nine passing yards. I think I'm gonna put four hundred dollars on both. Cause on I both think, go over over two sixty nine. Yeah. I mean I do think that the Steelers defense I do think that the Steelers defense is really good, obviously. But um I don't know on the road in Vegas. I, I do think Garoppolo has been slinging it around, and I think week three is kind of the make or break. We you can see like all the adjustments that like the Steelers were trash in the first half, and then they came back after halftime and they were much much better. So I expect them to go into Vegas, and I expect Kenny Pickett to throw a little bit better and have a little bit more time to throw. Mm-hmm. In Vegas, so I'm gonna go over two sixty nine. It's basically for both, a neutral field Garoppolo game. It. It's not yeah. like he's gonna be super wild crowd for Yeah, and yeah. I mean, is it the Raiders' first home game? Maybe ever. Um, well, I'm not sure. I, I think they're I mean I think their week one might have been. I still Google Oakland Raiders if that makes sense if that helps anything. I when I'm looking literally them up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, and then for, for the, the drive in the Jaguars versus Texans game, you said between 81 and 84 yards. Seems to be what they're saying. The temperature is going to be. Put $200 on neither. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Because, ooh. In Jacksonville, in the heat. There's a chance the temperature um, just prices the drive right out from even being eligible. Yeah, right. That's why I feel like it's always hotter than it, it than they say it. It's forecasted usually. I also think that the the that the Texans defense is kind of better than the Chiefs defense. I mean, I, I the Chiefs are so bizarre to me. I mean, and I and I love them. You know, I uh, you know I I really like that team. But just year to year, in order to be able to pay your quarterback all that money, you really have to spread it out. And, you know, you have all these new receivers. That's why what Daniel Jones is doing is so amazing to me and with the Giants because he has nobody. Yeah. And they're still yeah. winning. He's yeah, doing it all by himself. somehow getting his receivers. And the Chiefs have everybody. And they're still just barely winning right now. So yeah. I'm sure there's no need to panic because – First Patrick few weeks, Mahomes. Chiefs are always so bizarre. Honestly, the first three weeks of every season, you just yeah. like, who is who is who? Yeah, because no one plays in the preseason, so no one has any real practice. So it yeah. takes a few games for them to kind of get up to speed and to even just the conditioning, you know. Just All the Chiefs not good being players exhausted. didn't even play in the first game anyways. <laughs> no. They're not in no, no hurry. No, Chris Jones. No, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, I don't know. We'll start trying in December, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm gonna put two hundred dollars on neither. Oh, man, Carlos. And then I'll I'll put four hundred dollars on Carlos Santana to have more hits than Jordan Love has touchdowns. Ooh, okay. You said that's for a three day weekend. Yes, that's Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And who are they playing? They this weekend the uh, Brewers are. 
and they are in a tight playoff race. They are yeah, playing. Yeah, they have a lot to play for right now. Yeah, they've been awesome. They the swept 22nd, the Rangers. They they start a three game series in Miami. Carlos Santana in Miami. Oh, Ooh, they got things that. are gonna get. Ah! It'll be, it'll, as long it'll as they be. don't go out partying on Thursday night like everybody, <laughs> like the Braves just did. We got swept in Miami. Well, we weren't really playing anybody because we clinched the night before. But then we had we flew to Miami that night from Philly and then had a day off in Miami. Yeah, just a potentially just like, detrimental town to clinch your division in. Yeah, yeah. So I was just like, yeah, Acuna went out the next game with a leg cramp. I'm like, yeah, I bet there was lots of cramping. There was lots of dehydrated players out there. I saw them all at a 7-Eleven buying Gatorade this morning. Yeah. Just like, I don't, like I'm like i sure they all must have had so many B12 shots, but there's never enough in Miami. So those are the three right. so that we, I feel the most comfortable putting right. my money on. Now, which on. one of those three would you like to make your lock for the week? Oh, I would take... Uh, Carlos Santana hit says my lock. Right. Okay. This could be a big All right. week here. Um, mm -hmm. Great. Well, best of luck. We'll, we'll let Thank you know you. how you do after Monday Night Football next week and great. see where you end up on our uh, leaderboard. Awesome. Yeah. Let me see. <laughs> Kyle Brandt's going down. All right. Well, you know, Sarah's great. Uh, it is She's a good awesome. time for Georgia sports. Wow. Yes. Are they all of the Eagles? Um, yeah. At least really we fair. let the best defensive tackle prospect in 25 years slip to the best team in the league because everyone was sad a boy had a car. Um, <laughs> you know, who would have thought when that you kid simplify didn't it get like in that? It You're really is. Yeah. A, a kid didn't really... want to get in trouble? Okay. Um, he's probably, that's probably the worst thing anyone's ever done in the league. Anyways, the Browns game was good. Uh, could you? I think if look if the Browns are playing on Monday Night Football, I don't think we need to play in the air tonight beforehand. Damn, that's a great call. And uh, look, the Browns like Deshaun Watson putting his hands on a referee, and uh, right, and and then the the NFL coming out the next day saying, um, yeah, we're we're okay with that. Uh, I don't know if there's very... ever been a uh, the wrong kid died moment more in the NFL than when Chubb got hurt instead. Yeah, that seemed very unfair. You know, it, they should have. It honestly, the person who should have gotten hurt was the guy with the with the chub. Um. <laughs> chub uh, down goes chub. Really should have been his speech in court, and not the highlight <laughs> from the Browns game. Um, I do think that uh, it, Bradley Chubb is just so likable that people still didn't hate the Browns as much as we should. No, yeah, because we were like, well, no, that guy's good. They got at least one good. Does this not feel like in remember in, in Breaking Bad when Walter White uh uh gets all those guys killed in prison in like 30 seconds? Yeah. Does this not feel like what the NFL is doing with running backs who asked for money? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Barkley yeah, and yeah. Chubb and Eckler all at the exact I'm, same time. I am no joke terrified for Derrick Henry this season. Right. At least Derrick Henry I, anything already happens got paid to him. once. He like did already they, get paid. He it, did. Yes. Barkley and Chubb and Eckler were like, hey, guys, should we ask for $5? And the NFL was like, actually, Mike Ehrmantraut is going to slit your knees. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck in, enjoying that one. And then um, and then here's uh, Nick Chubb's backup. What is it? Uh, something Ford, Jameel Ford or something um, is like really good. And I he looks explosive and yeah. exciting. And. I can't wait for him to ask for money only to uh, blow out his knee or, and or just get banished by the NFL entirely. Uh, all right, well, let's get our bets in here. Thanks again to Sarah. Uh, all right, I, Austin, I'm putting $200 on the 269 passing yards happening. I'm putting $200 on the Bears scoring more touchdown than Chiefs wide receivers. Okay. I'm putting $200 on the temperature exceeding any drive length. I'm putting two hundred dollars on um, the Bears having a play longer than the Chiefs' points. I think Ooh. it'll. I think the Bears' ninety-nine yard kick return will beat the Chiefs' score by two. Um, I, I'm putting, and then I'm putting my final two hundred dollars on um, the the Lions taking more knees. Okay, and all I'm right, avoiding the Carlos Santana bet because I. Had to sneeze while you were explaining it the whole time, and I never sneezed, <laughs> and I didn't hear what it was. You weren't focused. <laughs> oh, man. You were allergic me of a to West beer, Side so story. I can't bet on brewers. 
<laughs> okay. Are you allergic to beer? Yeah. I've always known you not to be a beer drinker, and I know I've, I've never known why. Yeah, yeah, just because that. <laughs> <laughs> the allergy is a big – one of the big reasons I don't drink is because I die. Yeah, that's and why – uh, the th- calories. That's why Thomas J. didn't uh, hang out with bees until the yeah. very end. Yeah. <laughs> He can't see without his glasses, you know. Uh, <laughs> all right. The I'm going with um, I'm going to go. One hundred dollars on none of the quarterbacks getting two hundred and sixty nine yards. OK. OK. So I'm taking no on both of those. Right. Um, is that does that two hundred total or is that just one hundred dollars for zero? It only counts as a hundred. That's a cr- one of those crazy bets where you can bet and compound and either it's like an an almost lock, you know. Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm saying a hundred dollars on zero. Uh, I'm gonna go two hundred dollars on no drive is more than the temperature in the Jaguars Texans game. The I'm going Bears team touchdowns over. Uh, what was that? We both had Chiefs Bears team. Ooh. Yeah. Then the. Chiefs wide receivers. I'm going to go Bears team touchdowns over Chiefs wide receiver touchdowns. I'm putting $300 down on that. Um, I am so scared about the Carlos Santana bet because he is a very streaky player. He has had multiple games in a row where he's had no hits. So I am going, oh gosh. And I'm, I'm banking on the, on the fact that he maybe sits out one game. Maybe he does go out and party too hard in Miami. So I'm going Jordan Love for $100. And then I'm also going Lions kneel downs for a hundred dollars, and I'm really hoping they have the same amount of kneel downs. And and because they've they've uh, started one and one, they've they've done well this season with him wearing black. I'm hoping he wears black to set him mm-hmm. over the edge to give him the win. And then my last bet, um, which is more points by the Chiefs or yards in the Bears' biggest play, give me the yards in the Bears biggest play, and I believe I only have a one hundred dollars left. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I think you have two hundred left. I've got one hundred, two hundred, three hundred, six hundred. Oh, damn it! All right, give me two hundred dollars on that. All right, All right. and I'm two hundred dollars on that. I'm going to make my lock the temperature in the game. <laughs> such a funny thing to make your lock the weather i know uh, right <laughs> we have no idea <laughs> what watch, watch there be like a cold front that moves through it doesn't have to be game. that cold just one kick return that's that's actually a good point like right. a it helps you to calvin turn. ridley yeah um, but you said you said yes or no you said no. i'm going temp oh, okay temp higher than drive temp is higher than drive. What, where do you want to lock up i'm gonna lock up damn it i'm gonna lock up bears Bears biggest play yards. That's my lock. Two hundred dollars. All right, um, we're feeling good. Uh, hey everybody, thank you so much for listening. You know, we'll be back. Let us know what you're betting on. If you got prop bets and stuff, let us know about yeah. that as well. And uh, we will see you here next week. Go follow Sarah. Go find her where she's performing and stuff. See y'all. Yeah, at, at Sarah Tiana. <laughs>